Welcome back. So today I'm going to be making some note cards. I'm going to make holiday note cards, but I want you to know that I make note cards all year round and I send handwritten notes to my friends and family all year round and they are always very well received because nobody does that anymore. So if you take the time to make a pile of notes, they will last you uh, for months, if not for the whole year. Not only do you get practice with your colors and your stencil layering and your paper painting techniques, but you also get a plethora of note cards that you can share and people genuinely appreciate. So we're starting out with uh, some makeup sponges, a four inch sprayer, a brand new, brand spanking new five by seven gel press plate, uh, courtesy of the folks at gel press, um, three, uh, to start with, three uh, holiday colors, but not traditional, but in the family of holiday colors by uh, Golden Fluid Acrylic. So iridescent bright gold, quinacridone crimson, and turquoise thalo. So it's the red green family, but you don't always have to do cadmium red and permanent green light. So those are our paint colors. Um, I've got um, folded uh, card blanks that I get on Amazon and that list is going to be below for you and I've got some of my new stencil designs from Joggles. So this one is called Rosewood and not only is it roses but it's also spirals with sort of a square uh, uh, feeling. So I made them to be spirals and then they looked like roses but um, really I'm having fun with the sort of geometric spiral shape on these. Uh, this this one is called Hula Hoop, and um, it's a lot of fun. It's a thin mask in a frame, and um, it produces a lot of great uh, patterns, especially when layered with others. And then this one, I believe, is called Jump Rope. Um, don't quote me on that. Look on their website for it, uh, because sometimes I forget the titles of them. But this is going to be a lot of fun, especially in small sections when we just use an area of it on the card base. So um, I also would like to incorporate my uh, one of my favorite Joggles foam stamps that I designed. And this is a brand spanking new courtesy of Joggles. And this one is called Seed Pods. So let's open that up. This is a foam stamp that is um, about an inch thick. It's easy to grab on the edges without getting your fingers on the paper. It's lightweight and very easy to store. And it's got this fun seed potty pattern on it. So we'll incorporate that somehow. And so uh, let's get started. Now remember, when you get a brand new gel plate, you want to take the brochure out, you want to read what it has to say, commit it to memory, and take it out of the clamshell box. If you feel like you really need to keep it, you could tape it to the top of the clamshell box, but you want the clamshell box clean and uncluttered so that the gel plate can go back in the box. Don't throw the box away, but do remove the mylar sheets that are on both sides of the gel plate, remove these thin mylar sheets and discard. These are part of the manufacturing process and they are not meant to go back in the box with your gel plate or to stay on your gel plate. These get thrown away. They're just part of the manufacturing process. Your beautiful gel plate is gonna go right back into the box that it came in and you're gonna close it up and you don't want the brochure in there because it can transfer color to the plate. And you're gonna close it up and you're gonna store it up right on the shelf like a book. So I'm working on my nonstick craft mat tabletop, so I'm gonna put the plate directly on that. Um, everything wipes off and cleans up off of this. Right now I've got some glitter that's sort of stuck in spaces from my Glinda portrait. Um, but even glitter and glue comes right off of this, this tabletop, which I love. So when I make cards, I do start on a white base because I like to have some white negative space uh, in the cards so that it's not real dense and, and feeling uh, tight and compacted in the color. I like to leave some of the white base space. I also sometimes purchase card stock blanks in other colors, such as brown craft or off-white or pink, and then I leave that color showing through as a color from the background. This is different than when I create my hand-painted collage papers and I always work on a light-colored solid. When I make my cards, I work on the blank white paper to start. 
So we're going to work from light to dark because layering and translucency of the paint, we want to be able to see things that overlap and layer. So we're going to look at our paints and we're going to realize that um, iridescent bright gold is a metallic. And even though you can see the tick marks through this, and these are indicators of the translucency of each pigment, those um, I know from experience that uh, gold shows up over the dark colors because of the iridescent uh, quality of it. So this is going to be my last layer. So of these two, the quinacridone crimson appears to be more translucent than the turquoise thalo. I can see the black tick marks through this better than I can see through that. So what that means is that I'm going to start with this light color and then I'm going to go to the darker color. So my first layer is going to be the quinacridone crimson. So when you're working in your palette, you want to work from light to dark and then remember that iridescence such as metallic gold, copper, bronze, and any of your interference or pearl colors are all going to be great as a last layer because they will show up over even the darkest of dark colors. Now, the best thing about the 5x7 gel plate is that it lines up perfectly with your 5x7 note card, and you don't have to worry about print going on to the back or being out and around the edges and getting on the palms of your hands when you press the print. So I do love working with the 5x7 plate when I'm making 5x7 cards. It's the perfect size and it lines up really nicely. So here is the first print. We've got the blooming in there. Whoops. We've got the blooming in there. I don't mind it. It's kind of cool. And we've got a really nice white pattern showing through from this stencil and it's very ab abstract and I really like that. So then the next thing is I've got a ghost print. So when I lift this up, I've got the paint that was trapped under the stencil and I get to make another card print with that. And look at how beautiful that is with the blooming in the lines. Now you can't fall in love with the blooming because it eventually does go away. So I'm gonna spread out again, a nice thin layer of paint. And this time I am going to put the spiral rosewood and i'm gonna put that sort of off to the side and then i'm gonna get a solid in this one corner so you can lay the stencil instead of just laying it all the way over think about different kind of compositional ways that you can put it at an angle and give yourself a little bit of a solid area and here might be where we would come back in with this stamp and stamp gold right on that so think about giving yourself some some solid areas offsetting the stencil uh giving room for another layer so let's do that. If you wanna get extra fancy and print your envelope, here I've got the really nice rosewood stencil off to one side, leaving me more blooming area down here for something else. And the ghost print, when I lift that up on my five by seven envelope, I can pull out the uh, flap and put that right here and I can make a matching envelope with the ghost print pattern. So it comes over the top just a little bit, which is nice, and it is over the flap, and it is gonna match nicely with what I do on this card. The next stencil um, that I'm gonna show you is the Hula Hoop. This is one of my favorites because I love the swirly organic lines. So I'm going to put that on here all the way vertical, full frame, and print I don't know about you, but I think that's a tons of fun. Um, now the this stencil can also go off to the edge and leave us an area for a stamp or another stencil. So let's try that. So I'm going to bring this off to the side and print my five by seven card right on there. Really like the way that that's so abstract, like chain links. And I'm gonna put that ghost print on the side of my envelope. 
quite fun on the envelope. Okay, so now we're going to come back and start layering and embellishing our first prints. Let's see how we're going to do this. Let's put the rosewood on the plate and leave a negative space area and let's not go full. So let's go partial with this one and then we'll take advantage of the rest of that for another card. So we're going to get creative in our layering here. Rather than just full frame layer, um, we're going to get a little more interesting composition this way. So that's interesting and fun. And now we've got another section here that we can layer onto this one. So let's bring that over here. And we've got some interesting layering going on there with the red and the green. Now I'm feeling like the turquoise thalo is a little dark. Um, so I think I'm gonna come back in and blend that with a little bit of teal. Teal is an opaque color. You cannot see the tick marks through it at all. So we're only going to add a little bit of it to the turquoise thalo to make sure that it is still translucent. But hopefully it'll lighten it up. Again, it's all about experimenting. So here's uh, the teal on top of the quinacridone crimson and showing up, but still dark. So I think what I'm actually going to do is switch to 100% teal instead of the turquoise thalo so that I can have a light color and a dark color. Because right now we have two relatively dark colors, so we don't have a lot of contrast. Then I do want to have a light color and a dark color. So I'm going to, I've learned from my results and I'm going to switch my gears and I'm gonna go with this light teal so there's a nice um, variety of values. So instead of using two dark colors, now I have a light color and a dark color. And I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna go over the whole thing. I'm gonna go over half and I see that I have more coverage right along this side. So working backwards, I'm gonna put this over two layers of the hula hoops. Whoops. So this is fun. And now you can see uh, the, the contrast that this teal is lighter and that the red, uh, the quinacridone magenta crimson, sorry, quinacridone crimson is darker. And we'll try layering it differently uh, in a minute. We'll put the teal on the bottom and the red on the top. But I love this uh, combination. And that is a great setup for a stamp on top of that. Now here I've got one uh, that I was practicing on that I think could be kind of cool with this ghost print right in here so I can work in sections so here we've got a little bit of that ghost print so we can do some sections and then again I'm gonna do a section of that I'm gonna run it along this side of this card so you can always work in sections in full frame or in half frame um, it's all up to you. Once you get a composition that you like, though, you could make two or three with the same composition. Oh, I do love that. You could make two or three with the same composition that you like um, and send them to different people. So I'm just going to use my gel plate as a palette and put my makeup sponge into it. I'm going to put this rosewood spiral right here. I like how that came out. So I'm gonna also add one right in here. So that's working with the makeup sponge and really putting them exactly where you want them. There are some times when you wanna start working on a full solid color. Let's do half. So let's put this one partially so we've got a half solid and some blank white space and we'll take a second one put it right there so now we've got a solid section and i'm going to do two things i'm going to take the um quinacridone magenta and a new makeup sponge and the hula hoop and give myself one line 
of that pattern with the makeup sponge. And that gives a nice soft edge to that lovely loopy pattern. It gives it a nice soft edge and it allows you again to put it specifically where you want it. Um, we could also do that along across the top of the envelope. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put out the gold onto my gel plate and then I'm going to grab my foam stamp, my seed pods and press that in. And with this sectioned card, I'm going to overlap that into the teal and onto the white. And you can see how the gold stands up over the teal because of the iridescent properties. So now I'm going to put out a little more paint. The foam stamps uh, require a little bit more paint on the surface. So I'm going to lay that out a bit thicker. And now I'm going to make a second stamp that's gonna run off the edge of this card. And in order to not waste anything, I'm gonna put another card right here next to it. And I'm going to print two in sections. So there, some more paint on the stamp yields a much better print um, and you can see it over the teal much better when you get a little more paint on the stamp. So now I've started this one with the section and I've got some neat effect with this one. Now we can grab a section of gold, maybe for this area that's been left white, just by putting it on the edge here and grabbing the paint in the irregular pattern that it already is, since I used it as a ink pad. So now I've got a nice section of, of gold up there at the top. Again, I'm going to do a section that's gotten, the gold has gotten a little bit of green in it. So it's gotten a little bit of a tint to a goldish green, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. A nice greenish gold and two nice sections. And then we can switch to the Quinacridone Crimson. I'm going to roll that with the same brayer so that it gets a little gold blended in with it. And think about adding it in a section to this card and... Okay, let's do it that way. That's going to give us full coverage here. And then we've got a beautiful greenish gold showing through the rosewood spiral stencil. And we've got this nice dark red area at the bottom that we can reserve for either the seed pod stamp or another stencil. We can always go teal over this because teal is opaque and it will go over the top. I'm going to use the hula hoop stencil and hopefully I'll be able to get a line of it here. So let's grab that across the bottom of the plate and overlap that in a section. So now I've got a lovely section of the hula hoop at the bottom with the, uh, crimson and the sort of greenish gold. This one is, uh, well, we'll go this way because it'll fold in half. So that's lovely. And I love that little bit of white, that serendipitous little bit of white that sort of just ended up there. It's wonderful because we've got light colors, medium colors, dark colors, and then a bright light. So we've got a full range of lights and darks here, which makes it visually exciting. So I've got this section that I'm now going to put on the bottom of this card. And we've got the lovely hula hoop. It's got a little bit of the crimson left over from the plate in it. It's got the bright white contrast and we've got a nice solid here where we could do the stamp. So we could come back in there with the crimson and put the stamp right into that solid and, and, and overlapping down into this. But 
And this is my Joggles foam stamp called Seed Pods. And remember that foam stamps require a little bit of a heavier layer of paint. So lay it on thick, thicker than you would for a stencil. And we're gonna put this right in here. And then we've got three at once. We've got a small section of this one. We've got a nice small section on that one, which is gonna need something else to tie it together. And a great small section on this one. Love that with this. Simplicity of that is just beautiful. So it's um, layering and combining, using your five by seven gel plate, using a sponge to go through specific areas of the stencil, starting on white or starting on some solid areas. Um, have fun with it and experiment with it and enjoy the brand new stencils from joggles.com. I'm loving them. So I'm going to keep going. And for uh, more in-depth tutorial videos, um, I will take this card uh, project further with some other combinations and I'm going to switch up my colors and that's going to go on my Patreon page. My Patreon page has in-depth tutorial videos every single week. And for a minimal subscription of $25 a month, you have access to everything that was previously published, including the full Better Building Better Backgrounds workshop and the full Wizard of Oz portrait series workshop, as well as everything moving forward. It is the best deal on the planet. Happy Friday, and thank you for being here.